Well, we had the CPI release coming on Wednesday, but honestly guys, there's a huge problem and unfortunately it's actually the Fed. They seem just bent on completely destroying the market regardless of what the data says. So we need to talk about that specifically because it's absolutely going to impact your stocks as these CPI numbers come out. Basically, whatever we think the Fed's gonna do whenever CPI is released may not actually be what happens if the Fed decides to pull the rug on us. So I'm gonna make sure you're prepared for that and that way you can take advantage and not lose anything if that happens. I just ask an exchange for you to gently tap that like button and consider subscribing too. It's super easy to do if you like the truth without the hype. And I may have left a special price on my website for my group for those that want to join today. So make sure you check out the pinned comment down there, see everything that you get and see if a membership's right for you. All right, so we'll get to specifics with CPI, what I think is going to happen and all those sort of things and what the different scenarios are here in just a second. But we have to kind of talk about the Fed overall and just kind of, I don't know, let's just talk about the Fed. So we all know we got inflation inflecting down, you know, massively. We all know everybody's screaming that Fed, you know, needs to stop cutting rates. But yet the Fed at every turn seems to be saying, hey, we could have one, maybe two more rate hikes to go. So is the Fed, you know, what are they doing? I guess that's really the real question. What the heck are they doing? What are they thinking? What are they seeing? Um, where's kind of their head at? You know, I know a lot of folks, it's not a popular opinion. I understand that. I completely agree. Uh, but you know, the fact of the matter is the Fed has handled not the initial inflation wave, but once they finally got off their duff and decided to do something, they've done a pretty good job of signaling ahead of time, what's coming, what's happening, what they're thinking, and, you know, basically executing to that and not giving the market a lot of surprises. And more importantly, coming out and kind of trying to calm the market down when they get too far ahead of themselves one way or another, basically for over a year now, they've done a pretty decent job of that. But here lately, you know, we all see that the fight with inflation is coming down. It is coming down rapidly. Um, I agree, it's not done, it's not over with anything else like that, but it is coming down rapidly. So why do they continue to, to put out this, we got one or two hikes left, you know, hey, we're staying on top of this. We're not seeing what we wanna see. Um, why are they saying that? Is there any truth to that? And, and the answer is honestly, there actually kind of is a little bit of truth in that. Um, one, I think they're doing that just to keep the markets from going nuts. I, I think it's the biggest thing. Um, secondly, they haven't broke anything yet. So for all the screaming about how the red, you know, the rate hikes are breaking things and breaking this and breaking that, the data is just not showing that. Unemployment's not showing that. Your GDP is still growing. It's not showing all these big negatives that we all think should happen whenever the Fed raises rates. So, you know, outside of what I think will be, you know, we're going to have issues in commercial real estate, which we honestly have been having problems in commercial real estate for a long time. Just low interest rates have been hiding that and masking that problem. Uh, that's a whole separate video for a whole separate time. But in regards to anything beyond that, the Fed has the option. They could raise it another quarter point. I mean, what are they breaking? You know, they're worried about unemployment and they're worried about the economy. And right now, both of those are still doing quite well. Matter of fact, you could still make the case that unemployment's you know, maybe finally starting to get itself back up to normal from those crazy, stupid lows. It's still not quite there yet, but definitely getting more in that range. So, you know, when the Fed's looking at that, I think they're letting the market know that, hey, if we see anything we don't like, we're going to drop that bullet out there, one of the two that we have here, and make sure that we're not going to repeat the mistakes of the 70s. So, you know, I, I don't like the way the Fed necessarily is messaging it this time around. I think they could have done a better job of, um, messaging as opposed to, um, I won't say give us more dovish commentary, but at least uh, acknowledge that, you know, things are at least moving in the right direction and that we have these tools here in case something breaks, in case something, you know, doesn't go our way, in case inflation continues to inflect up or, you know, reverses course and goes back up. So that way we're not surprised if indeed we see a high inflation print that they then go right ahead with a quarter point or maybe even a half a point raise but they really haven't messaged it that way yet. They've kind of just said, hey, we're not seeing what we want to see. And so we're going to keep hiking. And that just is a little bit unsettling there, you know, in regards to, I just think it's a little bit disingenuous, I guess is where I'm going with that. So, so bottom line is, I think the Fed is absolutely in a spot to actually, you know, raise a time or two more. And I don't think it would hurt anything or break everything or, oh my gosh, the whole world is going to end. Yeah, you're right. They, they, can, they can raise it five points, but then at another quarter point, ooh, that's too far, you know, no. It's still there. They still have the ability to do that. And I don't think break something significantly. But on the flip side of that, I just wish that that messaging was a lot better and a lot clearer like it has been over the past year. So hopefully this isn't a deviation from policy. Hopefully there's something else going on underneath the surface there that we just don't know about. But in the case of the Fed, that's kind of my thought process with that. All right, so let's jump on over to CPI here. And to me, there's really three different scenarios that are going to play out. And the first one is, is that we see it finally inflect down into the threes there, you know, mid threes or so. Uh, would be a nice number. So if that happens, 
I absolutely think the market is going to continue its run. I don't see any reason why it would stop it. We are still seeing inflation creep down, you know, at a very nice clip. And, you know, basically as long as, you know, <laughs> the Fed doesn't come out with some sort of a statement or something else uh, to the contrary, it's going to continue to fuel and give fuel to the ammunition of Wall Street that, hey, they're done hiking. There's no reason to. We're still winning this fight. And so I think everything kind of moves forward as is. So if that's the case for me, I'm just going to continue to execute on my plan. There are still stocks on crazy discounts right now. No, no, it's not your Metas or your Palantirs or your Teslas. Uh, I can make a case that they're not terribly uh, priced either, but they're definitely not on steel deals anymore. But there are other steel deals that I would just continue to buy and continue my modified DCA just as I normally would. But the second scenario is kind of the crazy scenario, and that's if it actually inflects down into the very low threes, maybe even with a two in front of it, then, oh my gosh, I mean, you, <laughs> you guys know exactly what's going to happen. Wall Street is going to lose. It's just going to go bananas at that stage. Uh, I really think, you know, the bull narrative will be really strong. A lot of the people, a lot of the money waiting on the sidelines may actually start to come in. And I think we're going to get a nice rally off of that number. Again, of course, the Fed could put out a statement or something else that could completely squash that. But in general, the market is going to run. So what does that mean for me as an investor? Well, first off, that means, thankfully, I put more money in the stock market than I ever had in 2022. That's the first thing right there. Having those plans and executing to those plans, you know, all the way through this year has continued to pay off anytime, you know, momentum finally starts coming the right direction for us as bulls in the stock market. So that's kind of the first thing there is I'm going to enjoy that ride. It's absolutely going to be, you know, more, uh, although we party in red days in my group, <laughs> definitely going to have some very, very pleased people uh, as their portfolios not only have turned over green from, you know, all the other negative stuff, uh, but also starting to see significant green in their portfolio. But for me, there's still going to be deals. Not every single stock is going to run. There's still going to be stocks that even if they do run are still at a great price relative to their valuation. So for me, it's about sticking to that plan, staying disciplined, not starting to chase and making sure I just stay disciplined in my plan and continue to execute. So that's usually the hardest part right there is not to get FOMO because I haven't finished filling out my position here. Go ahead and plan for it right now. What are you going to do? If you want more Tesla and Tesla starts to run, if that happens, what is your plan for if that indeed happens? How far do you chase it? What is your price target? What is your actual valuation for Tesla to make sure that you don't get caught up in any sort of a FOMO run or anything else like that? Plan that all out ahead of time and you're gonna be just fine if that's the case. Now, we don't know if that's the case, who knows, but if that is the case, you wanna make sure you're prepared for that run and not in the middle of the emotion of the run whenever it happens, because that's where you make mistakes. And lastly, we have the polar opposite, which is inflation coming in hot, either the same or actually higher. And at that stage, guys, you, you know, Wall Street's just going to sell off. Um, everybody's gonna doom and gloom, you know, every, everything's gonna be the end of the market, stock market crash here blah, 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 all that sort of stuff like that. It will absolutely induce a sell-off. Now for me, okay, let's see what the Fed does, but it would definitely lend credence to the narrative of they're going to increase rates again. But again, I don't see another quarter point or a half point as devastating to anything. And I don't think it will push us all the way back down to those October lows again. So for me, it just screams opportunity when we will eventually have that bull market, you know, next run up that happens. So I will just simply follow my plan. I have my price targets laid out ahead of time. I have everything I want right there ready to go. So Wall Street wants to get dumb. They want to sell off because inflation creeped up a little bit. Now we know the Fed's going to raise a little bit. Cool. It means I'm going to get an extended period of time here where I can buy stocks on great discounts. Everybody's saying, oh, I wish I would have bought Palantir here. or I wish I would have bought Tesla here. I don't know if it'll get back down to those levels, but you're definitely going to get some discounts. And are you then prepared to pull the trigger on those uh, you know, buys? Are you ready to do that? So that to me is the most critical piece of all of this is to be ready for those type scenarios. So when they happen, you're in a win-win situation, right? Hey, inflation comes in great, comes in in the twos. I'm making money hand over fist. Awesome. I'm winning. If it comes in lower, hey, great. I'm going to get some steel deals on some stocks. Maybe not as steel deals as last year, but for me, this is a long journey. This is a two-year, five-year, 10-year, 20-year journey in the stock market here, and I'll take them. I take the wins every single time I get them because that's where my mindset is. I'm going to win if the stock market goes up. I'm going to win if it goes down too. I just got to wait a little bit longer. Got to be a little bit more patient. And if you want to get my entire watch list complete with price targets, see all of my buy and sell alerts in real time. Plus take five courses for free. Have access to me anytime you want. Slide into my DMs. Jump on our live Q&As that we do weekly. And we have a stock analyzer tool that's going to be completely free for members to use. 
make sure you check out the pinned comment down there and see if a membership's right for you. And click this video here if you want to see the exact stocks I'm buying in this market. And click here if you want to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.